So I'd like to introduce our next speaker, um, Philip Talecki, and um, he's the CEO and President of Cernova Corporation. I had the pleasure of meeting Cernova at um, a JDRF partnership event, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. And so when we think about where some of the science and technology is moving and you think about how diabetes, um, especially type 1 diabetes, is treated currently, you replace the insulin. Why not replace the cell that's been destroyed in the autoimmune response? So um, Philip and, and Sir Nova and, and his team have been working towards a fascinating um, technology in that space. And like many of the members in Life Science of Ontario, as a startup company, he goes through all the challenges of a startup in uh, raising capital and all the finances to, to get to the clinical trial stage. And I think Cernova is a great example of someone who has done that very successfully, um, but to uh, invite Philip to come up and talk about um, um, the, great, uh, the great research behind Cernova. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much for the opportunity to speak. I do want to say that uh, Cernova is a Canadian company in London, Ontario. This is a Canadian technology. And um, I just spent about a week and a half down in the U.S. going to various cities, talking to potential investors. And um, our technology is highly valued in the United States as well as around the world. So. One of the things that I'm trying to do right now is get Canadians to really be excited about uh, developments that are happening in Canada, because I think in the same way that you see all the movie stars going down to the U.S. and getting recognition, uh, we're finding that a lot of companies and technologies from Canada end up down in the U.S. where they get the recognition. So I think it's time for Canadians to get real recognition for the technologies that we're developing. So I support uh, all of the uh, comments and um, forward thinking that people are doing right now here. So what is Sonova about? So we're a clinical stage company. We're in London, Ontario. Everybody asks why on earth are we in London, Ontario instead of uh, Toronto, but insulin was discovered in London and there's a great uh, university there that we're, we've been working with as well as a fantastic transplantation center. And our scientific uh, founder was in London um, and who worked on getting the company started. So we want to make this um, an Ontario discovery that, that moves forward so we can bring in uh, tax dollars for, for uh, Ontario and Canada. So what are we doing? So we're working on developing uh, work in chronic diseases and especially insulin-dependent diabetes. We have a program in, sorry, also in hemophilia and thyroid disease and we're working through a regenerative medicine type approach. And what we have developed is a therapeutic device that we place under the skin. It's about the size of a business card. It forms an organ-like environment, and we can put therapeutic cells, even islets, into that device, and those islets can be connect up to the blood supply, and they can start producing insulin and replace the function of the pancreas. And we can do this for a number of different diseases. And our goal, is to eliminate or reduce the number of uh, lifelong injections that patients have to take in this area so that people are not considering themselves patients anymore, that they're you know, considering themselves having their diseases under control. So what did we do? We have a very unique type of technology that is different than anything anyone's developed around the world so far. So we developed something called our cell pouch. And what the cell pouch does is a highly coarse scaffold that has chambers in it. And what we do is we stick it deep under the skin and we encourage the body to grow into it, tissue to grow into it, and we form what have been termed beautiful vascularized uh, chambers for placing therapeutic cells in. Uh, the therapeutic cells that we're working with, we start off working with human donor cells. So there's something called the Edmonton Protocol where we can get human donor islets and we actually can take those islets and put them into our device and try to get them to function better because we've created a natural environment for them. But we're also working with stem cell derived technologies. And we've licensed a technology from UHN from uh, Gordon Keller and Christina Nostro uh, that we're working on and developing right now. So again, another Canadian technology that we're working with. And we also have to protect the cells from destruction from the immune system. And we have a number of ways to do that. We can either give uh, medications to the patients to do that or we also have what we call a microencapsulation system 
that we put cells into the go within our device that can protect those. So um, a lot of companies in our field have one product that we're working on, but uh, being Canadian and being having to do 10 times as much work with 10 times uh, less money, we're very aggressive <laughs> about uh, moving things forward. So first, clinical trials that we're working on is, is actually working with patients that are hypoglycemia unaware. And these are the patients that can take an insulin injection, and it's almost like playing Russian roulette, whereby you can um, essentially Sorry, this keeps changing. You can essentially crash down um, and have your insulin, your blood sugar levels go to zero and go into a coma and die with each insulin injection. So these patients really need something now. Uh, and so that's the first uh, product that we're working on. And then as we're moving forward, we're looking at working on these micro-encapsulated cells. Um, and then we have a program in hemophilia and at the University of British Columbia, we're working on the thyroid program. So one of the things that's really important uh, that I learned from working at Angiotech, because as soon as we were successful with our drug eluting stent, every pharma company came after us and tried to break our patents, uh, which is something that people don't like to talk about, but this is what happens. So um, we filed patents very uh, early on, and we now have uh, patent, full patent claims in virtually every country of the world. And so this gives us protection so that as we're going forward, uh, we get control over this product, but we also get the opportunity to be able to license our product to pharmaceutical companies so that they can then pour the money into it to help develop that product and move it forward. Uh, from the manufacturing perspective, uh, very briefly, we've manufactured our, our device uh, by contract manufacturer under GMP conditions. So a lot of times when people are starting up, they will manufacture their product in a garage or something like that, but we made sure we did it properly right up front so we can do clinical trials in Canada, the US, and uh, Europe. Okay, sorry about this. So we have two uh, major programs that we're working on. Our diabetes is the most important one. Um, in the background, it looks like, you know, you start up your company, you do a couple things, and all of a sudden you're in clinical trials. But we actually have a 4,000-page regulatory document that we submitted um, first to Health Canada and got approval for clinical trials to here. And then now we've also moved ahead, and we're now doing uh, clinical trials in the United States. So I'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. Um, we also have a hemophilia program, and what's really exciting is that I think we're probably the first uh, ex-European company that got funding from a pan-European uh, project called the Horizon 2020. So our, we have a consortium in Europe uh, that Cernova is a part of where we got 5.6 million euros to be able to support our hemophilia A program. And that's occurred over the past three years. And we started out as a team of people from different countries that spoke different languages who all thought differently. And after the three years, we now have uh, a product that we've developed together um, that goes into the cell pouch that produces factor eight for hemophilia patients. So this is an example of a grant that uh, is you know, for cooperation of the European Union that can fund serious development of programs such as what you were talking about earlier, something that Canada should be doing. So I'll talk briefly about our uh, diabetes program. I always like to go through a little bit of the science so everybody understands how, you know, some of the experiments that we do. So this is uh, an early study that we did. And basically what we do is we make animals diabetic, and then we can insert our cell pouch under the skin and we can put uh, eyelets into the cell pouch. And what we find is that over a period of time, we were able to make 95% of the animals insulin independent. So in other words, no need for taking insulin anymore. And this particular study was done independent of Cernova by an academic investigator. And what we typically do at the end of the study, about 100 days, is we take the pouches out and we see that without the pouches in the cells, then the animals are still diabetic. So it really shows that this uh, device with therapeutic cells is working. We've also done uh, large animal studies because we like to take the human scale device and prove that it actually works uh, from the diabetes perspective. And we're, I think we're probably the only company uh, out there that has been able to move our technology from mice into large animals, non-human primates and humans. And so here we can see uh, this is a cross section of the pouch right here that comes out at you, and that's the tissue that is developing, and inside that uh, white area there is where you put the therapeutic cells. 
Um, so we've been able to show over time that we can control blood sugar levels. And here, one of the most important things is when you take the device out, you want to make sure the cells are still alive that you put in there. So on the left-hand side, you can see that all those purple things are islet clusters, and there's blood vessels associated with every single islet in there. So it shows that um, we are really forming an organ-like environment for our cells, which is what is going to give you long-term efficacy. And I think my favorite uh, slide in the company is the one on the right, which shows an islet sitting there, and it's stained for insulin in red. And all those little circles there are cross-sections of blood vessels that have come in and are feeding that islet. And that's what's helping to control blood sugar levels. So I always talk about uh, the, we always talk about the advancements in um, glucose pumps and how they've gone from just, you know, giving you insulin to having some control over that insulin. And now the next step is glucagon. And a few years later, it's going to be somatostatin. Our device uh, with the therapeutic cells produces all of those now, so the patients uh, can have complete control over their blood sugar levels. Um, so we were able to, our team was able to uh, get clearance by Health Canada, and we did what's called an IPA. Um, we, we put the device in patients for the first time ever in a small number of patients, and then we transplanted cells into the device, and then over a period of time, we took devices out to see what was going on. So, so what we found is that uh, we were able to show that the device itself is safe in the body, so we got no inflammatory response at all. We found those beautiful tissue uh, vascularized tissue chambers in the device that form for the therapeutic cells. And then when we put the islets in there, um, what we did was we um, took the pouches out, cut them up, stained them, and then we sent them to a blinded uh, pathologist who didn't have any idea what they were looking at. And they came back and they said, holy cow, you, it looks like you guys have islets sitting here and they're highly vascularized, so what, what on earth are you guys doing? So we, we then got to talk to them about it. But what we found is that um, these islets from humans were uh, producing insulin, somatostatin, and glucagon, all of the same kind of things that we found in all of our preclinical studies, which is really, really positive. So on the right-hand side, you can see um, islets that were actually taken from a cell pouch in one of the patients that we had. And in red there is an actual islet stained red for insulin. And the green are blood vessels that are actually going right to the center of the islet, which is exactly what you see in the pancreas. So this is very, very positive. So what we then did was we took all the data and everything that we learned in this first in human study, and we uh, worked with a physician at the University of Chicago and took six months to develop a clinical protocol. And once we were happy with what that would look like, we went to JDRF USA and we were able to get 2.4 million US dollars for, to help fund this uh, clinical program. So they've been very, very supportive. Um, this particular study is really exciting to us because we're not only looking at safety of the cell pouch and the eyelids, but we're also looking at all of the measures of efficacy that to be able to understand how the cell pouch is working. And in this particular one, we're really focused on um, looking at dosing of the eyelids over a period of time so we can see what the first dose looks like and how that works, and then a second dose. And we're going to be following these patients for a while. So we have been um, I always like to say that normally when you go down to the U.S., you have to have a pre-IND meeting, and it takes months and months and months of discussion. But um, we went down with our technology and worked with a group down there, and we were able to get our um, IND cleared within 30 days. So we really have a lot of uh, respect down there, and the quality of the work that we were doing was recognized by the FDA. So um, we've gotten clearance from the Institutional Review Board, at the uh, University of Chicago, and we're now at the point where we're starting to enroll patients. So stay tuned for uh, lots of exciting news that's going to be coming out over the next year or so. Um, as we're moving forward, uh, we're working on um, having a local immune protection within our device. And so I'll just very briefly talk about that. Um, and this is for our stem cell derived uh, technologies moving forward. So you can take a ethically derived stem cell and you can run it through to be able to produce glucose responsive insulin producing cells and this is what we're working on right now. Um, uh, this technology, the idea here is that you can put the cells in these little micro capsules that go in the chambers and then they can actually stop the immune cells from attacking and potentially also stop products that are produced by the immune cells that will stop the destruction of the uh, cells in there. 
So we have shown that to be successful. And the really exciting thing is we're working with uh, the University of Toronto right now, UHN, uh, McMaster University, and we've worked with, um, and also the University of British Columbia. So we have collaborations all across Canada that are helping to develop these technologies. So um, our hemophilia program I'll be very brief on. Uh, what we're doing here is that uh, we're taking a sample of the blood from the patient. We're isolating a certain cell type. We're correcting the gene for factor VIII. Uh, we've been able to scale those cells up, uh, freeze them, they're shipped to Canada, we put them in a model of hemophilia, and we've been able to show that we can improve blood clotting for, in those uh, animals <laughs> anyway, uh, from, from the factor rate that's being released from the cell pouch. So this is an early program, but it's really moving ahead, and this is a first-in-the-world discovery that we have made uh, with, our, with our European team. So uh, very briefly, um, just like to, uh, we have, a, this is a collaborative team, so I'm just the spokesperson for the company, but we have a whole uh, team of people that do all of the work um, at Sonova, and we have a lot of support from across the country, from academics and uh, from business people, so, and lawyers, so this takes um, a really big team of people to make these kinds of things happen. But I just want to emphasize this is a Canadian discovery. And I think we should be really proud of everyone working on these kinds of discoveries moving forward. And really, um, I'm always told when I go down to the States that we're really, really humble and to be arrogant like Americans are. Uh, so uh, we're very humbly arrogant when we go down there. So <laughs> as Canadians, we need to be really proud of all the technologies that are being developed up here. So thanks again, and I'll take any questions that anybody might have. Excellent talk today. I have a couple of questions. So first of all is whether you have considered the long-term maintenance for immunosuppression with your current pouch? Yeah, so uh, for our first clinical trials, we're, we're using immunosuppressive drugs, and that allows us mm -hmm. to get some really important data on the function of the device, and it's always imp important to do it first. Um, so that's, and it's also helping that group of patients that, again, are what I call playing Russian roulette with their insulin, right? But as we're moving forward, our goal is to eliminate the need for medications uh, of these patients, and that's why we're working with the microencapsulation system. And we've actually conducted a, a study that is about almost a year long with microencapsulated uh, islets in a large animal model, and we've shown that uh, we can get efficacy for that period of time uh, and those cells are surviving that whole period of time. So we've had some really good success in that perspective. Excellent. And one more is that you mentioned that you are already working with Gordon Keller and Christina about yes. uh, using iPSC for, so I think that will take care of your immune suppression stuff. But uh, then what about the, our partner, like your partner in the south border, Wireside, they are working with the CRISPR. So can you comment on the CRISPR and also your data on some other setting? Yeah, that's a great, that's a really good question. And um, so there's two points. One is I, I don't believe there are any competitors in this field. I always look at us you know, as collaborators in many ways because uh, I see um, diabetes is sort of like an ocean full of fish that need to be treated. So BiSight has taken a very different approach that we have. They have a device that itself is immune protected. Um, that device, um, we have a different approach. We believe that you need to create that vascularized environment for the cells first and immune protect the, the cells uh, separately. So um, we're going in different paths, which is really good because you want to have different kinds of technologies uh, out there. Uh, they're starting to work in CRISPR. That's a very, very long, slow process. What that means is they're trying to make the cells uh, blind to the immune system. And we're actually doing some of that work in the background that I can't announce yet at this point in time. But um, we're, we're doing similar kinds of things um, from that perspective, but I, I can't really talk about it yet because we haven't announced it. Yeah, but we're, we're definitely on track with that one. Good morning. I'm Mark Smithies. Um, I think it's fantastically appropriate that you're in uh, London, Ontario, the home of Banting and Best. So I think that's a great <laughs> spot to be. Uh, and just, a, just an amazing technology. Um, from a commercialization perspective, um, I'm curious on, uh, you've been with the organization almost 10 years now. 
what has been, is there one or two challenges from a commercialization perspective uh, that were huge that you've overcome? And then maybe looking forward, uh, what are those commercialization challenges in the next five or, or ten years? Sure. Uh, that's, a, that's another great question. So, so the biggest challenge that we have overcome is getting cells to survive in an environment that is not in the pancreas. And Cernova is the first in the world to be able to prove that that can happen with the real thing, which are human islets. Um, we're the first ones to show that uh, islets can be vascularized and that they can produce all the regulatory hormones. No one else has been able to show that, not even by sight at this point in time. Um, from the technology perspective, the other thing that we have to do is when you have a disruptive technology, if you think about all the major pharma companies who are selling insulin, they're making billions of dollars selling insulin. And so we're coming along and saying, guess what, we're going to take your insulin market away and we're going to replace it with something that you don't really understand. So part of what we have to do is go and talk to all the pharma companies and really help them understand the benefit of making this switch. Because if you can imagine that patients don't have to take injections anymore, then the way I look at it is the pharma companies will be really excited about a product that can actually uh, reduce or eliminate the side effects of diabetes. And so what's happening with them now is a lot of them have stem cell derived programs that they're moving forward with. Um, and it takes a lot of education to be able to do that. So we've been meeting with pharmaceutical companies and just talking about our updates for years. And it takes years to get these partnerships uh, going. Uh, but we've been going on to California, JP Morgan, and many other conferences where you can meet uh, various business people from the different companies. And I think everyone is really moving in the same direction from that perspective. Uh, the one that everything, everybody always talks about is, um, just to give you an idea, our, uh, our typical competitor will raise 100 million US dollars down in the US and we'll raise three. And we have to do the same amount of work with that $3 million that they do with $100 million. So, uh, and it's Canadian dollars, so the Canadian dollars. And uh, so the other thing that I'll be really clear about is that um, we always talk about now that we have a cannabis um, country. And I think that we need to really be aware that that, is a, that may be an important thing, but we have to not forget about our uh, really advanced uh, technologies that could really support uh, the economic system here where we're actually saving billions of dollars in terms of helping patients or helping people who have these serious diseases. So we can't lose sight of that uh, amongst all of this. So I think it's uh, very, very important uh, to be able to support uh, these companies, as, as you are saying, and for uh, government grants, et cetera, to really ramp up considerably. And we're also looking for investors up here who can support our technologies. Most of our investors are Canadians, uh, and they have uh, families that have diabetes, and they're absolutely determined to see uh, Cernova be successful from that perspective. Um, one of the things I do find is Sometimes people say, oh, you guys are a company just trying to make a lot of money. And in reality, uh, what's happening is that our investors are pouring in a huge amount of money to be able to make something that can treat uh, patients and move that much more quickly than you can just with simple academic grants and this kind of thing. So I have to um, thank our investors for trusting us that, that we're spending the money wisely and moving these products ahead. So, you know, those are the challenges and the exciting parts of it at the same time. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much again. Thanks, Philip, for reminding us why we're actually here this morning. We're celebrating Canadian innovations and Ontario innovations that are supporting and moving forward um, uh, technologies to treat, prevent, and cure diabetes. So that was that was a great example. And uh, as a mother of uh, a son who has lived with type 1 diabetes since the age of two, um, I got goosebumps when I hear about that technology because it truly is a functional cure. 